Dart is known as an object-oriented language. This means we use objects as a way to organize our code. But what does that even mean? Well, when you start writing a program, you end up breaking that program into smaller tasks. For instance, some parts of the program will respond to user input. Other parts will save and load data. Other parts may even fetch things over a network and so forth. Now, we could write our code in one giant list, but that quickly becomes unwieldy. Rather, we break each task down into objects that handles one specific thing. These objects are basically metaphors that we use to define a task. These objects should do only one thing because that is their task. That's an object, but you often will hear the word class thrown around with it. A class represents a template for the object. We create the individual objects from our class definition. The class is just the definition. You can think of a class like a cookie cutter. The class creates cookies, but each cookie is unique. One cookie may have red frosting, another may have green frosting, but they all share the same characteristics of their shape. Another example are role-playing games. When you make a character, you often pick a class, such as a fighter, a wizard, or a bard. Each character is unique, but a wizard can cast spells, whereas a fighter swings a sword. When we define a class, we give it state and behavior. This is just a fancy way of saying we give it variables and functions. The object will remember the variables throughout the life of the object. Best still, you can pass around objects into other objects and all that state and behavior will go with it. Okay, that was a lot of information. Let's go see classes and objects in action. To get started, open a browser and head on over to dartpad.dev. If you have code already present that's not the example code, click the new pad button and select the Dart option. Then click Create. Alternatively, you can click the Reset button to clear the old code. We're going to create a person class that will keep track of the person's first name and the person's last name. We'll start by defining a new class. We use the class keyword followed by the class name. By convention, we start our class names with uppercase. Everything in our class is defined in the braces. Okay, next we're going to give it a couple of variables. These are called instance variables or properties. We're going to set them to empty strings. We can actually set them to nothing as opposed to an empty string, but you'll learn about that when we work with constructors. Now we want to create a method that will say the person's name. We will call this say hello. Here we are referring to the properties. If you place this method outside of the class, you'd get an error because variables only have scope inside the class. Try it out. Move it outside and you'll see we get an undefined error. Okay, move it back. It's time to create a couple of people. First, let's create a weatherman. To create an instance of an object, you simply put the class name followed by parentheses. That object is stored in the variable. We will set the weatherman's name to Phil Connors. We access each instance variable by putting a period after the variable name followed by the name of the instance variable. And that's it. If you want to print out just the first name, you do the same. In our case, we're using our say hello method, so let's delete that line. Let's also make a singer. This time, I'm going to create a person using the new keyword. This used to be the way to create objects in Dart. As of Dart 2, you no longer need to use the new keyword. You may see this used in older code, but for new code, it's a good idea not to use the new keyword. Okay. Let's assign the first name and the last name. Now to let each one say hello. 
we do the same thing we do when we access instance variables, except we are using methods. Now run the program. Both people say hello. Now you may be wondering why we wrote a say hello method that printed out the first name and last name versus just using a print statement to print out the first name and last name. You can do this, and it may be fine in some situations. Generally speaking, a good idea is to let the object manage its own state. As a benefit, other parts of your code can now use that say hello method. Also, when writing your class methods, you want to keep them small. If you find yourself writing a lot of code in a single method, a good idea is to break that method into smaller methods as a way to organize your code. As you can see, object-oriented programming isn't just about learning syntax, but there's a lot of best practices in design patterns as well. Don't worry about learning them all at once. It will come in time.